Minecraft iron farms typically look something like this. A zombie scaring villagers to summon iron golems in a killing chamber to generate iron. Not only is this effective, but it's actually pretty cheap if you have a village nearby. Now the only problem with this is that it is slow. If you have one chamber at least, you can build something massive and get a lot of iron per second, but that requires a big building and to acquire a ton of these little guys. But with something like the create mod, you can turn that simple idea and make it generate thousands of ingots per hour in a very small machine as well. My name is Dragon, and today I'll be showing you two different types of those farms. One for the early game, and one for the late game that can generate up to almost 4,000 ingots per hour. And how create generates those ingots is actually very easy. All you do is take a millstone or crushing wheels, to turn cobblestone into gravel and then a fan with water in front of it to wash the iron down into both flint and iron nuggets and it's that exact process that we're going to want to do over and over and over again with tons of gravel to make a lot of iron ingots per hour but you don't need tons of it and with that to start off with we're going to be building the early game farm to get started you're going to make a 5x5 five five square like this three lines of any block of your choice, and three lines of create shoots. On the outer two lines of stone, we're going to put down some leaves, and inside of those leaves, we are going to fill them with water. Then in the middle line of stone, we are going to put down some lava, and this will start generating us some cobblestone. Now what we're going to want to do is take some of these mechanical drills, and we're going to put them right on top of each of those pieces of cobblestone. We're then going to take these encased chain drives and we're going to put them on top of the drills. What this will do is it'll take the rotational energy from one of these drives and spread it across the entire length of the drive itself, going the same direction as well. So if I were to get a creative motor, you'll see if I put this down here, all those drills will eventually start drilling and dropping their cobblestone through the chutes. Just like so. So we're going to have two lines of those and then one more line down below to connect to the both of them together. So now they should both be drilling, which as you can tell, they both are. And above the lava, we are going to place a little bit of stone just to make sure we don't turn that into obsidian on accident. On top of this middle chain drive, we're going to put down two shafts and then a vertical gearbox on top of that. And connected to this vertical gearbox, we are going to put down five water wheels. Now you can power these water wheels any way you want, but I personally like to do is just cover up the middle, make a little ring on the outside of any type of block, and then just put water down on one side of the machine, and as you can tell, it all starts drilling. We're then going to attach millstones to the bottoms of these chutes, just like so. And what this will do is it'll take the cobblestone that is generated and immediately deposit them into the millstones which those will then turn it into gravel. And to power these millstones, it's actually really simple. All we need to do is take down a shaft from the encased chain drive up there. We're then going to grab a large cogwheel. We are just going to throw it down right there, attached to the two shafts we put down before. And that'll turn on all of these millstones and turn all of their drops into gravel. We're then going to grab another chute, put it under each of these. We're then going to put down a little platform to catch the gravel on. And we're going to put down a little bit of water in order to push all the gravel along. We're going to put a block down right here just to make sure that everything flows the way it should. And that'll force all the gravel into this one little spot right here. So what we're going to do is put a sign right there stopping the water. We're going to put down a barrel for storage right here. And then a block right down here. Then what we're going to do is grab a brass funnel and plop it down right onto the chest. And then we are going to grab a filter and we're going to put a piece of gravel into here and set this to deny. What this will do is that it will not allow gravel to actually get picked up by the funnel itself, but anything that is not gravel will then get picked up. So let's say I accidentally drop a shaft into here. As you can tell, that goes into the barrel, but if I drop some gravel, then it won't. We need this to happen because then once the gravel is actually washed, it'll go into the barrel, but not while it's just sitting here in its block state. And then we're going to take some leaves and we're going to plop them down right on there just to encompass the entire thing and then fill up those leaves with some water. We're then going to grab an encased fan and put them facing into each leaf. We're then going to take gearboxes and put them onto the back of each fan 
and connect those gearboxes together with some other shafts and some other gearboxes like so. That'll mean once one of these is powered, all of the fans will start spinning. And as you can tell, there we go. We start getting some iron and we start getting some flint. And this is the early game iron farm. It is relatively slow, but over time it will generate a decent amount of iron and a decent amount of flint. And you can just compress that down by hand into some iron ingots. Now this does use quite a bit of iron to begin with, mainly with the shoots and the drills. But over time it will generate you enough to turn it back into a profit. But with that being said, let's move on to the big boy, the one that generates a little under 4,000 ingots per hour. This one's going to require many more resources, including brass and a lot more rotational energy, so make sure you at least have a decent boiler set up before you get into this. So to get started, we're going to grab some item vaults, and we are going to make a maxed sized item vault. I believe this is a stack and 17 more total, but I may be a little bit wrong on that. But we are going to make a max size vault. On top of every single one of these blocks, we are going to put down andesite funnels that are facing into the vault itself. And we're also going to attach three more onto this side of the vault. Just like so. We're also going to put two more on the side of the vault, also facing in. We then are going to take a brass funnel and we're going to place it on top of this one. So that should be facing outward, but you might need to remove this one first. Just like that. We're then going to put a block down above this andesite funnel, it can be any block because we'll remove it later, and attached to this block is going to be trapdoors. Now make sure, whenever you're placing this down, that it is on this block. We want to make sure we can put down a block above it and have them be flushed together. You are then going to take more trapdoors and you are going to cover all of these funnels, just like so. Once that is done, you're going to grab a thing of super glue. And you're going to glue all of that together, all of the trapdoors and all of the funnels. Make sure you don't get any of the vaults because that will ruin the build. You are then going to take mechanical pumps and you're going to put them on top of the trapdoors, but not on top of any of them that are not above a vault. You're going to want it to look something like this, with this little edge sticking out, and then all of these mechanical pumps over where the vault actually is. Now make sure when you're putting these down to hold shift because if you don't then it will just obviously right click the trap door and also make sure that the arrows on the mechanical pumps are pointing down. You are then going to want to take any kind of block and you're going to surround the back end of this vault. Make sure you don't cover up where these funnels are because that'll be covered up by the gantry system and the shafts connecting to it. For the gantry system what you're going to want to do is take two rotational speed controllers and put them down on either side of the mechanical pumps, like so. You're then going to want to attach two shafts to this one, and three to this one. Attached to this side, we're going to do two of these gantry shafts, and then we're going to hold shift, and click one more time, and as you can tell, those two will not be connected, but we want that one to be like that. So we technically have two separate gantry lines, but they still are connected together. On the bottom sides of those, we're going to put gantry carriages down. Now make sure that these are exactly one block apart, like so. You want them to both be on the same edge of the line. So obviously you can tell this one's on the left side. You're going to want this one as well on the left side. And make sure that this brass funnel is also between the two carriages. You're then going to want to put down a block in the middle for storage. I just like using barrels. And then two of any block under those carriages. You're then going to want to glue all of that together and then glue these two carriages to all of this stuff back here, all of the funnels and all of the trapdoors, like so. Now we can move on to what actually generates cobblestone. First, we're going to take all of these mechanical pumps and waterlog them. If you didn't know, all of the pumps and the pipes, all of that stuff can be waterlogged, including the shafts as well, so it makes it really, really easy to generate cobblestone with. Then, on top of these mechanical pumps, we are going to put down the fluid tanks, now you're going to want to make sure if you are building one like this that has a maxed out item vault that you make sure that all of these are connected. You want to have exactly three 3x3 three three fluid tanks. Then in each one of these fluid tanks you're going to want to put in one bucket of lava each. Now you won't be able to actually do that in survival mode. So what you're going to want to do instead if you are doing this in survival is pick up an item drain, a mechanical pump, and a cogwheel. And then also just a hand crank. Then what you're going to do with these is connect a mechanical pump to the fluid tank. Put an item drain on top of that. Put a cogwheel down and then a hand crank on top of there. 
And then you would just right click the item drain with the lava bucket, like so, and as you can tell it'll fill up with lava. And then you'll crank it into the fluid tank. But because this is already full, I am not going to do that. Then what you're going to want to do is put a large cog wheel on top of both of these rotational speed controllers. Now you're going to want to set this rotational speed controller up to 160. And then this rotational speed controller down to 2. Then on the rotational speed controller that is set to 2, you're going to put down a vertical gearbox and then a cog wheel under said vertical gearbox. That'll connect up to all of these mechanical pumps and cause them to rotate once the machine is on. Connected to the rotational speed controller that is set to 160, you're going to put down one water wheel. And once this is turned on, you can see that it will immediately start generating cobblestone. So if I did all this correct, you can see the gantry goes back and forth, the lava starts coming through, and it starts generating cobblestone. And as you can tell, that is generating a lot. We just turned this machine on, and it already has a few hundred in there. And once it updates, it'll show even more, like so. Now if you're just doing a cobblestone farm, you can stop right here. And this will generate about 300,000 cobblestone an hour, which is already insane. But we're not going for a cobble farm, we're going for an iron farm. So we're going to keep going. Now comes the reason you're going to need a good boiler setup. On the bottom of all of these vaults, we're going to go down two blocks like so and just build out a line on either side. Then on the outside of these blocks, you're going to want to put down chutes. Then you're going to break both of those lines of blocks and then connect more chutes to the inside block of these chutes. So they should go something like this. As you can tell, that will start immediately pulling from the vault, and that's exactly what we want from all of these chutes. Now we're just going to take some blocks, we're going to cover up the tops of these just to make sure that nothing that we don't want gets into the crushing wheels. We're then going to come back a little bit like so, and then we're going to drag all of these crushing wheels out like so to fill up all of these slots that it can that is under a chute. You're then going to want to take a normal gearbox and put them on each of these and attach them all together with shafts and that will be able to power everything at once. Now the problem is that this takes a ton of rotational energy but powering it is in a very specific spot and there's three ways you can power this. You can power it with this gearbox right here that'll make everything spin the right direction. With this gearbox here or this side as well will also make it start spinning the right direction. What you're wanting to look for is having these crushing wheels spinning clockwise because that'll push all of the drops down instead of up. So I'm just going to leave this attached right here and put this up to max RPM. You are going to need these spinning as fast as possible. So that's why you're going to need a good setup because each of these takes about 2,000 stress units and there is a lot of crushing wheels so make sure you have a really good boiler setup. I'd say at least two tier four boilers should be plenty. Now under all of these crushing wheels is going to be a platform just like the other one was and this will be to collect all of the gravel. Then you're going to find out what the middle block is. For me it is this crushing wheel and we're going to cut out a little line right in between all of this. We're then going to take some signs and we're going to attach all of them together like so and that'll just block the water from flowing out. And then, finally, we can put all of our water down. So as you can tell, that'll cause all the gravel to run down into the middle. Now we're going to consolidate this just a little bit further. And all we're going to do for that is put down another sign attached to this side of the wall and another water bucket right here, and that'll cause all of the gravel to be consolidated into this singular block, which is perfect. We're then going to bring this down just one more block, and in all of the side blocks, like so, we're going to replace them with leaves. Each of those leaves are going to be filled up with water, and then behind each of those leaves is going to be a fan, much like the last one, except now there's four of them. And using gearboxes just like before, you can easily combine them all together, just like so. Then to get the rotational energy actually down to the fans, it's really easy. You're just going to need a vertical gearbox on this side of things. Bring this all the way down. Another vertical gearbox connected to that. And then you can just connect these together like so. And that'll make the fans start spinning at maximum speed. 
Now what we're going to want to do is grab a smart shoot and a filter, and under this block where all of these fans are going, you're going to want to put down that smart shoot. And in the filter, we're going to do just like we did before, and put gravel into here and click deny list. We're then going to put that into the smart shoot, and that'll stop any of the gravel from flowing through, which is exactly what we want. Then you can put down any block for storage. I'm just going to do a vault because I had it. And you're going to attach two brass funnels facing outwards. On one, we're just going to do flint, like so. And that'll mean every single piece of flint that is generated will then fall out this side. And on the other, we're going to do iron nuggets. Then under the side that has the iron nuggets, you're going to want to put down a basin, just like so. And above it, you're going to want to put down a mechanical press. Now to connect these two things together, all we're going to need to do is put down two cog wheels like so. And we're going to run a shaft through there like so. Now, if you aren't running with these two connected together and this not on max speed, you will need to make sure this mechanical press is running as fast as possible to keep up with all of the iron nuggets that are being generated. We're then going to grab another brass funnel and put it down like so. Make sure it's facing outwards. We're then going to put down a chute and then any sort of storage under that. But I personally like to use these storage drawers just because I do have them. So we're gonna put it down like so. And you can leave it just like so. All you're going to need to do is put an iron ingot attached to this basin to make sure it doesn't generate what you don't want it to. But personally, what I like to do is take a filter, inside of this filter, change it to allow, and put in both iron ingots and iron blocks. And we can just put that down right there. You can then take an iron block and attach it to this filter right here. And that'll mean that this basin will only let out iron blocks, so this drawer will only be filled up with blocks of iron. Now if you want to, you can put down another chute and another drawer to save all of the flint. However, I don't really ever use flint, so I'm just going to put down a cauldron and a lava bucket, and that'll cause all of it to burn without lighting anything on fire around it. And that's the entire farm done, and as you can tell, this thing is generating iron blocks relatively quick. We already have seven, and I only put one in there. So in the small amount of time that this farm has been on, it has generated seven blocks of iron. So, as you can tell, this one will work very, very quickly. Up to around 4,000 ingots per hour. And that's going to be the end of it. I hope you guys enjoyed. And if you guys would like some tutorials on any other Create Machines, then do let me know down in the comments down below. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed. I hope you have a good rest of your day or night, depending on where you are. And I will talk to you all later.